While these monsters think of feasting upon the remains of the marsh, we will remind them that the warriors of the marsh aren't the only warriors that will defend Sephiria. Born of a common trader northernmost family, an uncommon fair-skinned brown-haired young lady with exceptional height stood by and withstood the ridicule of the passing group. She'd heard it all before. I've studied the patterns of nature for food and trade. I could hunt. I've studied the migrations of the river bird. And you should always have protection. One would find the rare and expensive items for sale. Treasures like precious jewels, fine linens, and fabrics. Help yourself to a drink. It could be your first. It may be your last. Either way, the choice is yours. Come, see it. We must talk. Mel, I've worked it out with the men of Laws. To protect you further once I move on to the mountains above the clouds. James grabbed Joan of the Hearted and lifted her into the air. The two embraced and kissed deeply. The reasons to sail to the marshes are many. What say you, captains? Aye! aye. The king had already ordered a toll, which would later be called the passing. My faithful brother of the marsh, your clan will defend Brighton with us. We will be the rocks that crush their waves of assault. On the eastern bank stood its yoke counterpart, Castle Lily, standing as a constant reminder of the solidarity between both peoples' shared histories and cultures. Traditionally, the position for chieftain of Fort Brighton had always been fought over amongst the clans. But I've seen her fire her arrows, flying true to their mark, causing Ursus to regret the day he attacked a dumb girl from the northernmost. The bridge must be destroyed. The bridge was in its final phase of completion. And the woman who will bring Ursus's head back to Papalonia. Tell him of our selfless savior, James. Tell him of our woes. Our fort is occupied. Our great bridge decimated. The sun had set and had risen upon the marshlands. Throughout the day, Battlements were being constructed, and plans were made. The sun had again begun General. to set. They approached from the banks to assault the forts head-on, position the Heron clan on the bridge. They will guard it with their spearmen. Their archers will position behind the tips of their deadly spears to rain arrows on our enemies. The riders of Clan Reed will be held as a surprise assault. Trust me, assembled there in the courtyard of Castle Lily, Raise the gates so our enemy is blind to our plan. King James, what about our spears? With a ferocious cry of war, the Gwyn were slowed in their charge by the battle's dead. This was the breath the clans needed. The injured and savable were quickly collected before the Gwyn made it to the foot of the great bridge. It was greeted with a loud cheer. Oi, Ivan! Some of the other captains shouted. Proudly they stood ready to finish this battle, ready to send the Dasa back to the swamps they crawled out from. A scout blew his war horn to alert the war council of the Dasa that their target had been found. With that news, Can you ride? Giuseppe inquired. I've arranged for horses for all hunters that prefer. And here are some extra clips. forcing all those who entered to show respect to all citizens of Papalonia. They were indeed a people to be respected, masters of their agrarian lifestyle, along with exceptional skills in blacksmithing and woodworking. Papalonia was seen as the most well-rounded of the kingdoms, with a formidable military that allowed their women to defend their lands as tenaciously as they allowed the men to. The older citizenry, honorably stepped up in times of war, just as the young and capable would tend to the even older ones who couldn't. Everyone had a purpose, which was for the good of the herd. The sick and disabled weren't cast aside. Instead, comfort was found in compassion and camaraderie. The people would move the blockade stones for the person in need. It was this dedication, this mentality, 
that made the people of the Ox a valuable ally or a feared foe. Before the long peace, the kingdoms of the northernmost and Populonia had fought over the borders of their lands. But the war had ended with the people of the northernmost losing any claim to the forest, lakes, or plains that laid east of the mountain range's base, forcing the northernmost to harness and sculpt into their mountain home. The long peace had actually been a beneficial consequence of losing a war for the northernmost because their people were granted access to the river and given permission to build a dock. That perfectly placed dock would become the harbor that houses the most lucrative financial and trading hub in Sephiria, Wet Rock. For that access, the northernmost agreed to pay a small percentage to Populonia for each transaction that had occurred at the harbor. She defiantly drew an arrow, pulled it back, and yelled back at Ursus. You will not know any more victims. Your darkness will be wiped from my forest. We have a gift for you. With the release of her arrow, Wanderer dug his hooves deep and launched his massive weight behind his massive antlers. The arrow had sailed into Ursus's eye, causing Ursus to cover his face. You'll get the business, fool. An incredible and independent woman, just in case no man is secure enough to take this prize fit for a king. On one side of the bridge stood the Heron clan, combined with the remnants of the Turtle and the King's clan. The Gwyn had seen the king behind the Artreons. This greatly enraged them. Through the town he rode, sounding the alarm, awaking the sleeping city of the clans. Over the bridge, up to the gates of Castle Lily he rode. Speed and security were the scout's central missions. He was met by a small contingent of guards who started to question but were thwarted by the elders and the king. Ford Brighton and Castle Lily will be the rocks that break the waves of this approaching army. My queen, take the princes to our ally in Populonia. My personal guard will accompany you. Tell him to protect and keep you until I send word to return. James! Was all the queen could get out. Seron had started to advance with tremendous speed. Just as a master has his mule chasing a carrot to carry his wagon, the king used himself as bait, leading the Gwyn to fight on the bridge. The bridge kept the Gwyn in a column formation as they approached. With a mighty war cry, the king signaled for the giant gates of Castle Lily to open, unleashing the riders of the reeds. The Archeons opened their wedge formation, clearing the way for the charging cavalry and fell right back into formation but this time was different. I thought about your timber, dear Carmela. I want you to be safe so that you may return to whoever awaits you back home. It's only her father, your highness. <laughs> you are no stranger to me. In another life somewhere, our souls met. They were connected. From when I first saw you, I was entranced by your confident eyes of beauty. My heart has never felt this, and a promise will be kept. I give you my horse, so you will have a reason to return to me. I hope you will be safe, or should the horrors of the forest be safe from its queen. 